Sustainability is part of the DNA of Fujitsu. It dates back to 1938 when we first designed our manufacturing plant in Kawasaki to live in harmony with nature. By that I mean that we actually built an artificial lake and we planted a lot of trees to actually create our impact back to the environment. It also extends to the future where we have policy dating out to 2100 for sustainability with mid-term targets to 2020. In addition to looking after ourselves, we've also committed to reducing our customers' emissions between 2009 to 2012 by 15 million tonnes. Sustainability is actually how we do business. This is the second report that we've released, um, the one just previously 12 months ago. And the methodology we use is based on a survey containing 80 questions looking at ICT sustainability. It includes questions about practices, processes, technologies and behaviours across five key dimensions of IT. The first one being life cycle, end user computing, enterprise, IT as an enabler and metrics. This survey has included responses from a thousand CIOs and CI senior IT managers around the world. When we looked at last year's results in 2010, we actually included four countries, being the UK, the US, Australia and India. This year, with the thousand responses we have, it actually allows us to provide a benchmark for seven countries. So the additional three countries are New Zealand, Canada and China. What's disappointing from the results from this year compared to last year is that we seem to have declined when it comes to ICT sustainability maturity. That being that the score that you can possibly get out of 100 has declined from 56.4 down to 54.3. That indicates that maybe some of the uh, buzz around green IT has gone out of, out of the market. But more concerning, the areas that have declined is in end user computing. And this is traditionally where we implement a range of quick wins. So what that means is the quick wins we have implemented have grown back. And that also it reinforces the fact that we need to institutionalise these changes and make these behaviour changes, not just not technology changes. Really it is about visibility of the IT energy bill. One of the key findings in our research was that only 14.2% of respondents have included energy in the IT budget. And of those 14.2, all of those have a higher score. So they typically have a performance score of around 65. Whereas com companies that actually haven't included IT energy in their budget have a score of around 45. So really it is about visibility equals better performance. So the correlation between size and performance of a company is that those companies with 5,000 plus staff members typically perform better, that is they have a higher index score overall. But it's not the same for all countries. If we look at Australia as an example, in government, smaller agencies typically perform better than larger agencies. I think that rings true to some of the comments I made earlier about the fact that institutionalising change is very, very important. It's not the technology change, but it's actually being how you do that. So we also saw in New Zealand where there is typically an opportunity for smaller size organisations that they can actually make the change quicker and faster. The leading country this year is Canada on a score of 60.3, followed by the UK and the US. The other countries actually fall below the international average. We found that to be considered best practice, you need to have a score about 80 or above. But it was really good to note that in the US, one respondent from the wholesale industry scored 97.1. So best practice is achievable. Not surprisingly, the ICT, comms and media industry is the leading industry, as it was in 2010 although it still has declined since 2010. The, the least performing industry is manufacturing. But interestingly, in Canada, which we know is the leading country, manufacturing performs best. This 
report will provide you with valuable insight into ICT sustainability maturity. And from reading this, you can actually benchmark your organisation from a global point of view, country point of view and industry point of view and really start to look at where you can attain the most value for your organisations. There's a lot of low-hanging fruit to be picked that will deliver you significant cost savings.